Hey everybody, Dr. Jared Scourin from Spectrum Awakening. Today we're going to be talking about, you know, if you're a beginner, if you're new to this biomedical world, you know, where do you begin? Because we get a lot of different questions, whether it's it's questions from our patients, whether it's questions from you guys on social media, and, and kind of the bigger questions that we get are either those of you who are brand new, okay? You either just got your child diagnosed and you're starting to hear about different, uh, different biomedical options to help your child. And then we get this other set of groups where very specific questions. So we've got those of you who have been really in the trenches for years and years and years doing all these different biomedical things and kind of want advanced questions in different arenas. Like what about this? And what about pandas? And what about mitochondria? What about detox kind of thing? So today we're gonna be working on the beginner phase. Um, and again, for those of you who have been in this for a while, it's always good to kind of go back here. Let me, let me, I can't see the forest because of the trees. Let me kind of go back and look at big picture. Hey, what, sh you know, where do I begin? What do I want to make sure we do? Because honestly, in the autism world, things are changing and evolving on, on a weekly or a monthly basis. So we're always trying to keep you guys up to speed on what's new and how you can help your kid. All right, so we're gonna kind of be be talking about all those different um, all those different beginner things of say, hey, what do I do with my child? I either just got diagnosed or I'm new to biomedical. What should I do? Okay. Now, the first thing that I want to talk about is if you are brand new, you want to make sure you surround yourself with a community that understands what's going on. Okay, because guess what? If your family doesn't have kids on the spectrum, if your pediatrician doesn't really want to listen, you may not have anybody to bounce stuff off of. All the good stuff, all the bad stuff, all the hard stuff, all those the, the struggles that it has raising a child on the spectrum, you may not get the empathy from the family members that you're looking for, etc. So you've got to find people that you can resonate with, people who are going through this with you. Now, at Spectrum Awakening, we've got a new Facebook page, uh, which is a families page, where you guys can kind of talk amongst yourselves and bounce stuff off of each other, um, which is great. I love it. I love reading those things. I love chiming in every once in a while. So if you want to go to uh, the Spectrum Awakening Facebook page, not this one, but we have a families Spectrum Awakening page, that could help. Also, I highly recommend you find a good autism family support group. We love TACA. And we also love Autism Hope Alliance. So make sure you, you get together with these big groups. Um, I just received today in the mail, and super proud of it, um, a Speaker Recognition Award. Can you see that? Speaker Recognition Award for 2021 for TACA. Um, I love TACA and I've been with them for about four or five years now. And uh, love speaking with them, so it was really great. Did not expect to get that, so I got that today. So thanks to everyone at Taka. But honestly, Taka is such a wonderful resource for you guys to go get information and to to be with others that are going through the same thing. So you're not alone. So that's the first place to go is find support for yourself because you're going to need it. Okay. Now let's get into biomedical. Now, what is biomedical? Well, biomedical is the current phrase and term of the day that basically means we are going to be treating biology, okay? Autism is a medical condition. It's not a behavioral condition. I talked to a, a, a parent today from Canada who said, well, you know what, I, I, we have two older kids, so I wonder if he has autism because we didn't get to spend enough time with him or he had too much TV. No. No, 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 not at all, okay? This is a medical issue. It's not a behavioral issue. It's not a parenting thing. It's medical, and we got to get behind it, and we got to get the answer to it, and we do that by looking at the biology or the chemistry inside you, inside your child, okay? This is why it's called biomedical. It's, it's medicine of biology. So I printed a few things to kind of show you and walk you through it. Where do I begin, okay? When I'm looking at biomedical, the general goals of a biomedical treatment are number one, support appropriate nutrition, okay? Does my child have all the good stuff that I need? All the vitamins, all the minerals, all the good fats, all the good proteins, okay? Good air, good sleep, good exercise, all the good stuff that our body needs on a regular basis, do you have that, okay? That is, is a core part of biomedical treatments. Let's make sure your child has everything that they need and their body needs and their brain needs to run 
appropriately, okay? Next, we wanna support appropriate detoxification. We gotta get rid of the bad stuff, all right? Because guess what? This is a toxic world, all right? You, you, you've got heavy metals, you've got plastics, you've got pesticides, you've got air pollution. Do you know that here in the US, we have twice the asthma rates on the East Coast than the West Coast? Why? Because that's the way the air blows. The air blows all of the pollution from the West to the East. So the West Coast, half the asthma rates as East Coast that have double the asthma rates of, of the other side, okay? So we gotta make sure we support detoxification. We gotta get rid of the bad things, all right? So those are the, that's the basic core of biomedical. Let me make sure I'm having all the good things my body needs, and let me make sure I'm getting rid of all the bad things that I come across. And when that happens, you allow the body to heal, okay? Um, so that's, that's kind of the phrase of biomedical. Sorry, I get distracted by some questions in here. Um, so that, that's, that's how we make the body heal. Give the good stuff, help get rid of the bad stuff, allow the body to heal. That's the core of biomedical. So where, from a tangible standpoint, where does that begin, okay? And I wanna introduce for, for again, for though this is, this is beginner 101, what do I do for my child? Because guess what? You just open up social media, you open up anything and you're gonna get ad after ad after ad for this product and this product and this supplement and this supplement. And how do you know what to trust? How do you know what's, what's good? How do you know what's gonna work? It, it's, it's really tough to tell because there is so much out there. What we have done with Spectrum Awakening is everything that we've created is our, our treatments that I've used in my clinic. I've got a private practice where I work exclusively with autistic kids for almost 20 years now, okay? So all of these things have been created by me. They're all gluten-free, dairy-free. We make sure they're the highest quality and we know that they've worked with some of our kids because this is what we use in our clinic, all right? Now, nothing works for everybody. That's life, okay? So you hear these kids with B12 shots. You hear kids with gluten-free, dairy-free diets or this supplement or the other supplement, et cetera, okay? So when, when you gotta try different things, okay? Because some will work for your child and some won't. And that's just, that's just the bottom of it. That's why we've got a 30-day return policy because I want you guys to try this stuff and I'd rather you try it and send it back for a refund than not try it at all. There's a lot out there that can help your kids. So let's go down to the basics, okay? The basics are first, are you eating a well-rounded diet? Just right there, that one question, are you eating a, a well-rounded diet? Okay, it used to be the food pyramid, now it's the food plate. However they wanna get that information to you, are, is your child eating a healthy diet? Are they eating healthy proteins? Are they eating healthy fats? Are they eating all their fruits and vegetables a day so they're getting all their vitamins and all their minerals on a daily basis, okay? As you know, with our kids, our kids are such picky eaters, most of them are not. Most of them are not eating a well-rounded diet and you're going to run the risk of nutritional deficiencies and that can cause a myriad of symptoms, okay? So if you're looking for, hey, where do I start with different supplements? I would say the first thing is to look at a multivitamin, multimineral, okay? If you're not eating six to eight servings of fruits and vegetables today, and honestly, who is? Um, then you wanna get a multivitamin slash multimineral. Now the forms of the vitamins matter here, okay? You look at the ingredient list and you start seeing these big chemical names. Certain vitamins have better forms and certain vitamins have cheaper forms, okay? For instance, vitamin B12, really important for us to have. Methyl B12 is good, adenosyl B12 is good, hydroxy B12 is decent. And then you've got a really cheap form called cyano B12, cyanocobalamin. That's actually B12 mixed with cyanide, literally. Why would you put cyanide in a kid's multivitamin? But guess what? They do because it's cheap, all right? So you want to make sure you get the right forms there. <clears throat> all right, next, omega supplements or fish oil supplements. Do you have good, healthy fats in your diet, okay? Good, healthy fats are going to be nuts, they're gonna be different seeds, they're gonna be different avocados, okay? It's gonna be wild caught fish, not farm raised fish. If you've got good healthy fats in your diet, great. If you don't, you probably want an omega supplement to get that good nutrition, good fat, okay? Do you know what the brain's made of? Mostly fat, all right? That's why they call me a fathead, all right? Not because I have this gigantic noggin, but because inside our brain is made up of a huge composition of fat. You need the right fats for your brain, 
to function, okay? And last but not least, obviously super popular are probiotics, okay? Probiotics are those good bacteria that live in our gut, live on our skin, live in our sinuses, they're everywhere. There are many things that can kill off those good bugs, okay? Including antibiotics and tap water, all right? If you have tap water that is city water versus well water, it's probably been chlorinated, okay? And they put chlorine into water, they put chlorine into pools to kill bugs, all right? But that chlorine will also kill your own uh, gut floor, will kill your own probiotics. So you wanna make sure you've got good probiotics. Now you don't need a supplement. If you have a high fiber diet, you're gonna have amazing probiotics. So if you eat a lot of fiber, if you eat a lot of vegetables, if you eat a lot of beans, if you eat a lot of whole grains, brown rice, you should be good with your probiotic level, okay? So this is kind of the core. Do I have a good diet? And if I don't, do I need a multivitamin, multimineral? Do I eat enough healthy fats or do I need an omega supplement? And do I need enough high fiber or do I need probiotics, all right? That's where we start with the basics, very foundational basics of just making sure we cover our nutritional needs, all right? Now, that the next question to ask is, will this help my child on the spectrum? Maybe, maybe not, okay? We might be kind, we, you might see some improvements in some behavior, you might see some language changes, but are you really gonna see big, huge changes? I don't think so. However, they're good basic necessities that are going to help your health overall if you got a crappy diet. And again, most of our kids are picky eaters. They're eating chicken nuggets and some pasta and they're done. All right. Where's the good fat in that? Where, where's the fiber in that? Where are the vitamins in that? There's really not. Okay. So we know our kids are picky eaters. We got to cover their nutritional basics. All right. Stemming off from that point, <clears throat> excuse me, where do we go from here? Okay. Because we really want to get a fast, effective treatment to help our kids become neurotypical. And that's our goal. Our goal is, is having a child that recovers from autism and is neurotypical and is fully functional in the, and independent. That is our goal, okay? We want kids who grow up and can take care of themselves. That's, that's like big goal number one of what we want, okay? So now let's get into the next step for beginners of what do I do to help my kids, all right? So I want to talk about two things. Number one, what's very popular things out there are diets, okay? Gluten-free diet, dairy-free diet, GAPS diet, paleo diet, this diet, that diet, okay? Dietary changes can help your child, for sure. They can be very hard to start if your kid is a picky eater. We've had kids go on, on uh, what do they call them, um, you know, when you don't eat, you, you know, you resist, you're like, I'm gonna sit down and not, a hunger strike, there you go. We've had kids go on hunger, hunger strike for seven, eight days because they refuse to eat these alternative foods. So while those diets can be helpful, and I encourage all of you to eventually try them, because if you don't try them, you don't know if they're gonna work or not, all right? But we gotta help the sensory issues first. We've gotta expand the child's diet so they're eating a variety of foods before we start pulling away foods, okay? Because how many of your kids, every single food they eat is either made of gluten or dairy, period, okay? So it's, it's, the diet stuff is very helpful, but again, it might be hard to jump into if your child does not eat other foods. That's why I really like to go down the road of treating brain chemistry, okay? And again, when we look at autism, and let me just get one more picture at the far end of my desk. This is a, this is a little picture I put together that shows the different parts of the body that can be medically affected with autism, all right? I made it, I made it like a little flower. We've got kids who have an autoimmune encephalitis where the immune system attacks the brain. Just diagnosed uh, somebody with this this morning. We've got brain chemistry imbalances. This is what I treat first in my practice. All right, next, detoxification. You got genetic issues. You got gut and digestion, diet issue, hormonal problems, mitochondrial problems. These are seven different medical um, parts of the body that could be affected by autism. And we need to make sure we go down each and every road, testing and or treating. But again, this gets into advanced stuff. What I would recommend, number one, we treat brain chemistry first. Why do I treat brain chemistry first? Because it gives me the fastest results, okay? It gives me fast results quickly when it works. And again, this doesn't work for everybody, but I'd say 80% of our kids are, you're gonna notice sizable changes within a month when you start doing brain chemistry. So how do you do that? Well, 
let's segue over to what we've recently developed, which is a protocol for balancing brain chemistry called the Scourin Solution. So the Scourin Solution is a protocol that I developed to walk you through balancing brain chemistry levels in your child. So it's a great place to start once you've handled the basics of my child has a really good diet or I got him on a multi, I got him on an omega, and I got him on either a probiotic or a fiber supplement. That's very foundational basic levels, small improvements, but good health wise. Now let's take that first step into, let me do something really effective biomedically. So let's get into the four steps of the Scourin solution because I think that's gonna help a lot of you who are in this beginning phase, or if you've been down the biomedical road a long way but haven't tried brain chemistry supplements, it's a great place to start, okay? It is four different steps, and let me walk you through them. Hey, somebody just sent 500 stars. Thank you for sending Facebook stars. Facebook stars are a way to donate money to a Facebook Live speaker. We take 100% of the Facebook star money and pass it on to autism family support groups, including TACA and Autism Hope Alliance. So thank you for the donation. Next, um, let's walk through the four steps of balancing brain chemistry. The first thing that we need to do is reduce an excitatory chemical. And let me let me kind of take a step back. Chemicals in the brain, and there's a lot of them. There's serotonin, there's dopamine, there's adrenaline, there's glutamate, there's GABA, there's a lot of them in there, okay? They control the speed of the brain. So either the brain could be going too fast or the brain could be going too slow. So we need to create this balance, all right? So we need to start by reducing the accelerator. So we gotta reduce hyperactivity in our kids by calming down those excitatory chemicals. One of the major ones is called glutamate, okay? Glutamate is one of the most excitatory, hyperactive chemicals inside the brain. You've heard of glutamate, like monosodium glutamate, MSG, okay? We wanna reduce that. We use that with a supplement called anger management, okay? Anger management is the first part of our brain chemistry balancing, first part of the scouring solution. It lowers glutamate levels. It also lowers adrenaline levels. And this is really important to kind of reduce that hyperactivity craziness of a brain on fire, all right? Now, I like showing some scientific research, so I'm not just kind of flapping my gums, but there's actually some scientific proof behind this. So let me kind of walk you through some of the science that I pull out to, to kind of showcase why we've developed these supplements the way they are, okay? So first, this is a research study that talks about autism associated with anti-NMDA or encephalitis glutamate-related therapy. So I was just talking about the glutamate. Now, NMDA, um, NMDA is an important uh, acronym to learn. NMDA is the part of the brain that excites it, turns it on, and glutamate is the key, and NMDA is the keyhole. Okay, so glutamate goes to the brain, hits this NMDA, and just start going crazy, all right? So this is important in autism because um, NMDA and glutamate manifests as, hold on, I can barely read this, as psychiatric symptoms, including psychosis, hallucination, and personality changes. So if you have a problem with your glutamate and your NMDA receptors, you will have a lot of these behavioral changes, okay? <clears throat> Next. The role of glutamate and its receptor in autism, use of glutamate receptor antagonists. And this is an important word to remember. Antagonist is like a bouncer, okay? A bouncer in the club not letting you in, okay? An antagonist doesn't let this key go in the keyhole, doesn't let glutamate activate that NMDA receptor so the brain goes crazy, okay? So we need to look at antagonists to stop the accelerator. It's like putting a brick under the accelerator pedal in your car. You can't press it. That's what we want, okay? So currently, there are no pharmaceutical interventions to stop glutamate from hitting the brain. However, this review presents evidence in support of glutamate abnormalities in autism and its potential to transition into new treatments. So we wanna do, if we can find something that stops that NMDA receptor, it stops the excitement in the brain that could help with autism. Well, good thing we already know that there are, even though there aren't pharmaceuticals that are approved, we have natural things that are researched, okay? Here's one that talks about L-theanine, that's a protein or an amino acid, and how it acts at these NMDA receptors, okay? So theanine, which is a protein, um, exhibited a partial co uh, coagonistic action at the NMDA receptor. So 
we find theanine is a great ingredient to help stop this. Here's another one. L L uh, theanine protects against glutamine-induced excitotoxicity via inhib inhibition of the NMD receptor. Inhibition of the NMD receptor, uh, subtype of glutamate receptors um, and the initiated pathways is a crucial part of the neuroprotective effect of L-theanine. So L-theanine, really good. It's part of what we have in anger management that blocks this glutamate from affecting the brain and causing excitement. The other things that we have in anger management actually reduce your glutamate level. We're able to take glutamate and turn it into glutathione. Glutathione is a repair chemical for the brain. So I love our anger management as our first step of this scouring solution, balancing brain chemistry, because it reduces this glutamate, it blocks the glutamate receptors, it stops all of that hyper hyperactive excitement in the brain, and it creates glutathione, one of the major repair chemicals for the body, okay? So that's step one. Step two is increasing your serotonin levels, okay? So serotonin, we all know about serotonin. It makes us happy, it makes us calm, it makes us relax. We love serotonin, okay? Serotonin in autism, I find, is huge for improving language, okay? I wanna increase serotonin levels for language. So here's a couple research studies. Central serotonergic hypofunction in autism, the 5-hydroxytryptophan challenge test. Ooh, a lot of big words in this one. What do we got here? All right, these results suggest that autism is accompanied by a central serotonergic hypoactivity and that uh, the latter could play a role in the pathophysiology of autism. <coughs> what does that mean? What that means is hypofunction is low functioning. If serotonin is not functioning low, if we increase serotonin levels, it'll help. Okay, that's basically it. More serotonin, more help for our kids. 5-hydroxytryptophan is the protein that the brain uses to make serotonin. So let me say that again. Everything in the body is made from the foods we eat, period, okay? All these chemicals in the brain that make us happy are made from protein. That specific one is made from a protein called tryptophan or 5-hydroxytryptophan. That's the major active ingredient we have in our super serotonin support. This is the second step, okay? This is the second step of balancing brain chemistry. Once we've reduced glutamate, once we've created some glutathione, then we increase our serotonin levels, okay? That's going to help our kids on the spectrum, all right? Autism is associated with low levels of, ser this is a serotonin metabolite. So low levels of serotonin in the cerebral spinal fluid, all right? Daily treatment with 5-hydroxytryptophan, that's our super serotonin supplement, okay? Um, led to clinical improvement, right there. That's all we need to know, okay? Supplement daily treatment with 5-HTP, improved clinical signs of autism, all right? And we see it all the time. I use this supplement on thousands of kids, okay? Nusrat just said 5-HTP helped my kids sleep. I love it, okay? So that's step two. Step three is a special vitamin called folinic acid. Now, folinic acid is similar to folic acid. That was in your uh, prenatal, okay? Folinic acid, very special form, crosses the blood-brain barrier, really helps boost language and, and better behavior in our kids, okay? So folinic acid, really important. I love our formula. I created this formula with a Cornell PhD who her life work is folate and folinic acid and how this stuff works. So we've created something called super folinic acid. And boy, I'll tell you, can it help our kids? Let's read the research. Here we go. Folinic acid improves verbal communication in children with autism. All right, what does it say here? Not, th this research study saw improvements in the adaptive behavior scale, the aberrant behavior checklist, the autism symptom questionnaire, the um, behavioral assessment system for children, and significant, uh, significantly greater improvements in the folinic acid group compared to placebo. So this is actually a double-blind placebo-controlled study with kids with autism with folinic acid. You're gonna get improvements. Improvements in language, improvements in behavior. Here's another one. Flinic acid improves the score of autism in a placebo-controlled trial. Okay, the Autism Diagnostic Observation Schedule, the ADOS. We observed a greater change in ADOS global score in the flinic acid group compared to placebo. That's it. And now, the most recently published, this study was published uh, this month, November 2021, by Dr. Rosignol and Dr. Fry, big autism biomedical docs in the community. I love both of them. Um, for individuals with autism and cerebral folate deficiency, meta-analysis have found improvement 
using folinic acid in overall autism symptoms in 87%, irritability, ataxia, um, geez, I can't even read that, pyramidal, pyramidal signs, movement disorders, and epilepsy. We have given folinic acid successfully to help with seizures as well. All right, that's step three of the Scourin Solution. <clears throat> Excuse me, let me wrap it up. Step four is increasing dopamine levels. Dopamine is another really important chemical in the brain for focus and for concentration. I also see it help a lot of our females with their language. We increase dopamine with our supplement, Attention on the Double. So that is a four-step process to balance brain chemistry. So let me kind of sit back and review. If I'm beginning, okay, and I'm new to autism or I'm new to biomedical, I'm new to these supplements and I've heard they work, but I don't know what to do. Where do I start? Number one, okay, and SJ just asked, will this live be saved? Our lives are always saved indefinitely on, face, on our Facebook page until Zuckerberg takes them off. So we've got four years of Facebook lives. Feel free to go back on our page and watch anything that seems interesting. And please, you know, I ask you to do me a favor. One thing, share this with somebody, okay? Like and share our videos. There are so many people out there diagnosed on the spectrum, but don't know that there are answers. So please share this with somebody that you know so that they can get help as well. The numbers, as I'm sure you heard, just elevated to one in 44 kids. We got over 2% of kids diagnosed with autism. Go back to when I started medical school, it was one in 500, all right? The numbers are increasing dramatically and we need to do something about it. And we've got an answer, okay? We've got an answer to help your kids. So let's go back to the beginning. Do you have a, a well-balanced diet for your child? Very few of us do. That's life, and that's okay, okay? Multivitamin, multimineral. If you don't have a well-rounded diet with lots of fruit and vegetables, an omega supplement, if you don't have good healthy fats in your diet, and probiotics, if you don't have a high fiber diet. High fiber will actually balance your probiotic levels amazingly. Now, if you do need supplements, we've got a couple of them. We have our multivitamin, Boomberry. Uh, we are reformulating this. This is a good, this is a good multi. We're gonna make a great one. Uh, we also have some omega. There's a lot of omegas on, out there. We have a gummy. If you need an omega gummy that's vegan, a lot of kids will actually have problems with fish oil because they're allergic to fish or they have histamine tolerance problems and the fish has a lot of histamine in it. So this is a, uh, this is a vegan gummy if you want. And we also have probiotic. Again, a lot of probiotics out there. It's probably good to rotate your probiotics. So if you haven't tried ours, it's called Gut Reset. Try ours and then move on to another one. Rotate your probiotics, try different stuff. Okay, then start the scouring solution. Give it a try. It's a great first step of supplements to do. It's a nice organized protocol. You're gonna get this little printout leaflet of instructions. Once you've started this stuff, you're going to reduce hyperactivity with anger management. You're gonna get better sleep and language with more serotonin, better language and behavior with folinic acid, and then hopefully better focus concentration with more dopamine, all right? So again, that's that's beginner 101. Where do I start to help my kids? And, and, and again, I've gotta emphasize this. Spectrum Awakening, we've got a 30-day return policy. You try something, you don't like it, send it back. Okay, I just saw five boxes come in today. Great, I love it. I would rather you try something and return it for a refund than not try it at all. We gotta do everything to help our kids, okay? So I wanna work with you guys so we can do this. All right, last but not least, and then I will get to the live questions. Um, testing. There's a lot of tests out there. Where do I start with my test? If you've got a specific problem, if you've got a poop problem, get a poop test, okay? If you've got a lot of family history of autism, get a genetic test, all right? We got lots of these tests on our website if you wanna get those. But if you don't know where to start, I would start with something called an oat test, an organic acid test. An oat test is a nice kind of broad net because an oat test, and I've got a printout here. This is a printout of the Great Plains oat test. It's a sample report, as you can see it. Um, this is a test that we have on our website if you wanna get it from us or if you wanna get it from your doctor, doesn't matter who, but it's, it's very kind of broad spectrum. It'll test, this first page looks at yeast and bacterial infections in the gut. Then you've got test and analysis of mitochondrial function and a brain chemistry analysis. We were talking about balancing brain chemistry. You can test it. 
test it in the urine. This is a urine test. Don't have to draw blood. Um, different uh, vitamin markers, might be B12, B6 uh, type of markers, folate markers, other mitochondrial markers, uh, amino, I have this right side up, amino acid testing. So we're gonna look at detoxification. We're gonna look at amino acid issues. This is an oat test. So if you're looking for, for a test, like where do I start? I haven't done any kind of testing. The oat test is probably the good place to start. It's a nice wide net. It looks at a lot of different things. It's not everything. Okay, trust me, an O test is not the only test to do. But if you don't know where to start, that's probably the good first place to start. So that's kind of biomedical for beginners, all right? Get a few supplements to, to take the place of perhaps not the most perfect diet, who has a perfect diet, and then launch into some supplements to balance brain chemistry. Because I'll tell you, this is what we see in our clinic. We see fast changes with language and behavior. And those are the two biggest things that my families ask for. They're like, get my kid to talk and help with this crazy behavior or lack of sleep. That's where we normally want to start. And then we can get into diets. We can get into candida. We can get into mitochondria. We can get into genetics. We can get into autoimmunity and pandas. It's a lot more to do. We're going to be talking about an advanced Facebook Live next week. This is a nice place to start. Or if you have been doing biomedical for a while, but haven't done anything for brain chemistry. Because I talk to a lot of families who are like, oh yeah, man, we've been doing Diflucan for a couple of years. And then I tried CoQ10, I do the B12 shots, and we do the diet. That's awesome. That's great. But there's more, okay? So there's always more. There's something else new out there.